Welcome to the second edition of the TR Business Adapt to Survive Skype video interview series. This morning we are joined by Sam Gerber, Managing Partner Scross. Sam, it's great to speak to you. I'm sorry it has to be in a difficult circumstances like this amid the COVID-19 <coughs> crisis. Um, I'm just going to kick things off uh, by just asking you to give a snapshot of how your business is faring during this unprecedented period for our, period for our industry. Well, hi all. Um, quite a special format, isn't it? So the well, it's it's probably fair to say that we have seen some sort of an unprecedented um, impact in our business, really. And uh, probably not just speaking for ourselves, but um, we can really call the, the virus right now like a perfect storm for our industry. And so it is for us, right? So we do uh, probably majority of our business, uh, total business in, uh, in travel retail. And um, I could say that we are probably somewhere between 80, 90 percent affected right now as per today. And uh, we are now in week two of confinement. So week two that we work from home and uh, nobody really knows how long that's going to take. And how would you say the trading in this crisis compares to perhaps the trading uh, during SARS back in 2003? Well, I don't really remember SARS having a huge impact for us uh, specifically because, uh, well, we started our company in 2001, so it was, uh, was pretty new. But the, I, I guess that SARS was a lot more of an effect, has a lot more seen an effect for, for the Asia Pacific business, whereas for, for the European part, I remember, especially in electronics, it was not that much of a big impact. So um, I would rather compare the uh, the crisis today, almost similar to 9-11, uh, because the uh, the same halt in uh, takeoffs to the, the airline industry, the grounding flights, and then also with the uh, the mounting insecurity for a couple of months, uh, whether <clears throat> we're allowed to fly, whether we're not allowed to fly, which routes are open, and what sort of security measures were implemented in the airports. Um, as I have a couple of flashbacks uh, with a recent flight experiences that looked very much like the uh, more like a 9/11 scenario than uh, than SARS. Okay, and uh, interesting responses there. Um... But how is Scross positioning itself for the recovery with duty-free <coughs> travel retail in mind? Well, we do, we try now to to get ready for for the rebound. Obviously, now that has uh, different forms, and the um, we try obviously to to keep a very close contact with all our major direct partners and retailers uh, by uh, talking about possible scenarios. To, in regards of time, in uh, regards of uh, what sort of promotions that we want to run, what sort of um, products that we want to highlight, and yet the uh, the uncertainty in terms of timing when that's going to happen, so leaves us a little bit in the blind. So what we try to do really is is uh, continue to communicate, and I probably communicate a little bit more frequently and, uh, and more probably also on a personal more emotional level than we did before but i guess the we just have to keep the channel open listening talking and whenever there's an opportunity and there's not much to grab right now so because uh, some of our partners they, they had to close their stores or are closing their stores and and uh, we're just desperate to see um that we can jump in as soon as the store open again and are you still looking at possible new launches, new innovations for when things do recover? Because you never switch off in these times. You have to keep planning ahead. Well, we well, luckily we a majority of our of our business is driven by uh, by by uh, the innovation coming from uh, from the tech sector. And now we we just heard that the Apple has been launching a new iPad. So there's new uh, MacBooks being launched. Uh, Samsung will launch launch a new um, uh, phone. And uh, that world will never kind of stop. So we also start continue innovating our products. And we have a couple of products on, a, on the a launch ramp for uh, May, um, June. So we're getting ready with those. We're not stopping uh, our innovation uh, um, pipeline. However, we, uh, we still are quite anxious to see when we can push these innovations in front of the stores. And 
ideally that this should happen somewhere around June, July, so that we are still ready for the summer season. And then we're already working on the next uh, launches for, for late this year. So that, that, that pipeline is never stopping. Mm. And how challenging would you say your product sector <clears throat> is compared to some of the others during, like the others who are having to contend with the crisis and why? I think the uh, one learning I had, and based on the feedback from a couple of uh, airport retailers, is that technology is not affected probably the same way that uh, that we've seen um, uh, in a luxury area, for instance. And the, so we had one good news and one bad news out of it. Uh, the good news is those that we're not affected the same way as, uh, for instance, spirits and uh, and luxury goods, and the same where we, we also learned as a negative that uh, obviously some Asian clients are not buying our products at the same rate that European um, people will buy our products. So we, we clearly have something to do for the, when we relaunch, addressing the, uh, the Asian uh, um, customers better than we did before. At the same time, we, we, uh, we have learned that our products probably are considered more a necessity because uh, whatever you do, if you cannot loan, uh, charge your phone, if you if you're powerless in a in a in a virtual sense, the, you still need a charger. You can buy have, buy a bottle of whiskey, but I won't help you out for for a long time. But the, if you don't have a charger, you don't have a cable, you don't have an adapter, that sort of business is uh, probably pretty much resistant to any crisis. Mm. And can you just offer us an insight into the mood of the team at the moment and how they're <clears> adapting to the new routine? And can you just say and say what perhaps the major goal for the company is for the rest of the year, taking into account that the pretty half that the first <coughs> half has been pretty much written off? Well, in Switzerland, the our government has put us not in a in a real lockdown at the moment so the uh, we're still free to move but we, we still have decided <clears throat> excuse me to uh, to keep the um, our people exposed as a minimum so we have only a, a minimum uh, crew working from uh, from our office everybody else is working from home office as i do obviously right now and so health of our of our own staff is uh, is our primary concern at this time and just make sure that we communicate and uh, we keep the uh, yeah, direction all together and keep the moods up. Now, the uh, our primary concern was obviously from uh, from the time that we learned the uh, or we could see the some feel that the impact of the of the crisis um, was probably a lot, something that I can mirror with uh, with uh, most of my colleagues in industry. It's a lack of visibility. Is this is a one time event event that's just going to last for a week, two weeks, a month, two months, three months, nobody really knows. So uh, immediately we start thinking about um, best case scenarios, worst case scenarios. And I guess what is true for, for the, every, any business right now is that you have to manage your own resources. Uh, you have to manage uh, liquidity. You have to make sure that there's no overstocks. You have to make sure still the supply chain is open, the pipeline is open with your manufacturers. And at the same time, that um, that you have to uh, to watch the, the market environment, so your clients and uh, your your future partners as well, that the uh, that 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 everybody's ready to, to to restart business asap. And as such, we uh, we have asked the, the, the Swiss government; uh, they are quite cooperative in this uh, in this um, situation, I have to say. So, what we call some sort of uh, partial unemployment. Uh, meaning there's hardly a lot of work to do now for the domestic market. So we try to reduce uh, working time, the exposure, the financial exposure, as much as you can. And uh, I guess uh, reading from the press is pretty much every company in Switzerland is doing that. So putting everybody on a on a on a some virtual um, hold pause for for one or two weeks, and then after that we we got to see. So we just make sure that we're ready for the rebound. Mm. And just, uh, Sam, putting your uh, TFWA hat on just for uh, one moment, obviously your vice, your vice president corporate, um, just can you offer us an insight into just how tense and difficult was it to, like on behalf of everybody at TFWA, to come to a decision to cancel the event? Because the, the, the situation has escalated so much now <clears throat> since then. So 
it's very sad for everybody, but I guess it must have been extremely difficult for all of you at, at, associated with TFWA. Um, yes and no. So in hindsight, so I think we took absolutely the, the right decision. So we up to the to the to the day that we've met as a board and as a as a management committee. So we're still struggling with uh, with uh, visibility. So we <clears throat> we had to face a situation where even though some some nationals could have traveled to Singapore, uh, already at the same time, the uh, Singapore has issued some travel um, bans for people from for North and Italy, for instance. Uh, we could expect that this will be extended to some other uh, people from uh, nationals from Europe. So when we put the question about Singapore to the vote, so it was anonymous, everybody said, listen, it's really absolutely the wrong timing. And in hindsight, I think the decision was right uh, in respect of the safety of uh, everybody. So, and, and also, I think as an association, we also have a responsibility towards all the members and the ex exhibitors and visitors that in the current, in the current uh, situation, we could simply not ask a couple of thousand people to travel and exhibit uh, as, a, as, a, as a mass in an in a, in a exhibition area. Uh, when we're not even sure that the, all the flight routes will be open, that the hotels will be available. And, and also from a corporate perspective, uh, many of uh, the larger corporations have issues, uh, uh, travel uh, bans or travel stops, not just for budget reasons, but obviously for safety reasons. So I think it was the right decision to, uh, to, uh, to stop the event. Um, Heavy hearted though, I mean, we all uh, like the, the Singapore event quite a bit and it's, it's always good to network again, but I think that puts a lot more emphasis now on the, uh, on the event in, uh, in Cannes that we, we hope that everything goes ahead as planned. And just uh, really, just two things, num just two things, number one, how confident are you, do you believe that uh, can will go ahead? And so what would be your message to some of your brand counterparts and industry counterparts in general in this really difficult time? I feel very similar as, as we did in probably back in January about, uh, about Singapore. You know, we, we knew that uh, we have seen that the, that, uh, the virus is moving as a wave. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not a flood when a, and, a, and it, it's really moving a, as a wave around the world. Now, I'm pretty confident that that we're safe for can personally now the uh, the question is do our members exhibitors feel safe about traveling and are there any hot spots still in the world and in, in terms of virus or are there any issues and concerns that we don't we don't really know i I believe that the um, the event is still quite far away even though it's, it's September it's not that far away from a timeline but in terms of the, all the events and the um, the virulence that we have seen and, and, and how did the, uh, the, the the crisis developed and uh, just remember we're March and uh, we the, the whole thing started merely two months ago to be really tangible for, for all of us so two months down the line means uh, somewhere end of May uh, the world might again be completely different so um, here again, visibility is probably the major issue. Uh, I wish I had a, a really clear picture of what's going to happen over the next two months, but it's it's absolutely impossible. So I think that we have really to call everybody to to keep a cool head and uh, try to take decisions on a on a weekly basis. Try to to gain your own visibility for as as far as you can, and be pragmatic and your decisions. And, and I guess uh, if I would have my TFWA hat on, so we, we have now agreed to, to do a, a, a weekly call uh, of, of our board. Just lay down all the information that we have, just make sure that we have some sort of understanding how, it, how the situation is moving, what's going to happen. And based on that, taking another step forward. And if there's no steps to be taken right now, so then we don't take a step. So again, try to analyze and try to be calm. Well, thanks ever so much, for, Sam, for taking the time to speak to me in this really difficult time. Um, I look forward to seeing you on much, uh, in much happier circumstances. So take care and stay safe and hope to speak to you again soon. Thank you, Andy. Take care.